Alright guys, what is up? It's your Beast here. Welcome back to some more Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle stuff. This match right here is against a guy from Smogon by the name of Fivo. And uh, this is another YouTube battle here against this guy. And uh, my team right now, I'm using a Amipom, an Amoongus, and a Ditto. And an Elamala as well. Uh, Fortress and uh, Heatran are pretty common, I don't know you, but I'm actually using a Ditto on this team. Like I said, I'd use in this battle because uh, there are just too many sweepers in OU and um, they're not very easy to counter. But Ditto is probably the best counter against those sweepers because, uh, you know, when you send it in, it's got to instantly transform into that Pokemon and copy all those stats. So that's a really unique ability and that can really work out great in some situations, you know. So, yeah, what, what you're about to see in this battle is something really great. Um, it's actually the background, it's uh, it's changed from its default one. Uh, that's because uh, some guy actually made the code for this uh, for this background. I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name of the guy, but I'll remember to put it in the description. As you can see, the background it's looking pretty nice, you know. So I'll go ahead and leave this guy's link in the description, and uh, you guys can go check him out. And um, gonna gonna lead off with this end of palm, and I decided that I might as well just go for the fake out just to try to break any potential focus sashes. And uh, this ambit palm is also choice banded. Um, it's a choice banded fake out technician. It's not gonna really do too much to Jirachi, obviously, because it's resisted, you know. But still, it can be a very, very powerful Pokemon if you're using it right, you know. So, get a gun and send Fortress because I know I can easily wall it. And um, even though he might have the Fire Punch, I am heavily invested in physical defense. So, I know I can easily take that. So, of course, he's gonna end up getting the burn, which is kind of unfortunate. But I'll force switch out of there though because he does get the burn. And <clears throat> he makes a really great switch in right now and sends in his uh, Blastoise as I send in my Heatran. That was probably one of the best switches I've ever seen uh, because um, you know he could have he could he can now easily wrap spin away or my rocks and he also predict predicted my switch out into uh, into Heatran because Heatran is the only thing on my team that can handle uh, that Jirachi properly you know so now he's gonna go for the Skull it's not gonna do much at all to my uh, Moongus might have not been, might have not been the best player to stay in right here because I'm just gonna be able to spore his rapid spinner, which is which is amazing, you know, because um, then I can safely switch out into Heatran and then potentially set up some more self rocks, you know. And uh, this was great right here because he does send in his Jirachi, and this is a great matchup for me because um, obviously Jirachi can't really do too much to Heatran at all. So, gotta go for the self rocks. He predicts that nicely, sends in his um, sends in his Dragonite, and I just go for the HPS right here. And look at this right here. Multi multi scale Dragonite right here, it almost kills it, which is really surprising right there. I did not expect it to do, do that much, much at all because um, you know multi scale does reduce it by a hefty chunk, you know. But I am modest max attack, so I don't know really. It still almost killed it, which is really surprising, you know. So now he's gonna send in his Cresselia. I'm gonna send a fortress this turn because um, you know I'm just gonna send in try to just fodder out this thing because this thing is pretty much done his job. Well, actually no, because you know he wraps been away my spikes, but you know still I'm actually gonna be able to get up one more layer of spikes right here because um, right here actually makes sort of a risky play. He could have just be been able to kill me off with the uh, psychic right here, but I guess he's just trying to wake his, trying to wake his uh, blasters up and just get rid of my stealth rocks, but. I don't know really, that is actually a really risky play because um, that also gives me the opportunity to potentially kill off his uh, his Blastoise with something else, you know, and uh, that is exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to set up my Choice Bandit Abipom, and uh, I'm going to 2-HKO him from that range of health with the return, so I don't know really, he's not going to end up waking up anyway, so that was a good thing for me, but you know, I, I don't know really, that, that might have not been the best play, could have worked out if he actually waked up, but... Then again, it was kind of a risky play, you know. So, he's gonna set in his Swampert this turn, and I gotta predict his Stealth Rocks because what Swampert does not have the Stealth Rocks, I don't know really. Like, most Swampers do have the Stealth Rocks these days. So, I'm gonna set in Amoongus and, um, you know, just try to go for the Giga Drain because, um, I, I, I had just forgot about the Blasters dying, you know, because I could have just went for the Spore again because I, I his Blasters were, was, was already dead, you know, but. I don't know really, it's, it's really not going to matter at all in the long run, you know, so I'm going to set a fortress just, just as fodder, and um, he's going to go for the T-Wave, it's not going to 
really work out because I'm burned already. But I'm gonna end up dying to the burn anyway, so my fortress is dead, and I can set in something else to potentially revenge kill. So, I'm gonna set in Amber Palm, and uh, I'm gonna go for the Choice Banded U turn, hoping to get a super effective hit off. And he does send in his Landorus right here, or Landorus, however you want to call it. I'm gonna go for the U turn as he sends in his Landorus. It's not gonna do much at all because of the Intimidate, and obviously he does resist, you know, so. I'm gonna send in Ditto. Just to kind of scout out his move sets, and um, you know, it turns out that this guy has explosion, and I did not want to risk him going for the explosion and making my Ditto die because um, I did not want to sacrifice my Ditto that this early in the game, you know, because Ditto can work out great as a late game um, sweeper, I guess you can say. So I'm gonna set an Alamomala just to try to wall it because this thing is physically defensive, and um, he's gonna set on his Jirachi, and right here. We kind of played it fair right here because uh, I was thinking like, okay, um, if he goes for the Toxic and if I go for the Skull and if I burn him and if, if he does not miss with the Toxic then, you know, it's fair. But he does end up missing the first Toxic which uh, kind of sucks for him but, you know, I don't burn him with the two first Skulls which, uh, the, the two first Skulls which is fair I guess but he actually goes for the Fire Punch before, I, I don't know why I did that but, could I go for the Skull this third time and um, I do end up getting the burn and he actually hits his toxic uh, as well so that's that's pretty nice you know so that was kind of a fair play right there and I think both of us are gonna switch out this turn because um, there's n really not much we can do well actually he's gonna go for the wish first and then I believe he's gonna go for the protect but he's just trying to just heal up his damage I guess and um, I think I'm actually gonna try to go for the U-turn this turn because I was hoping it would do a little bit more than it did to this uh, Jirachi because um, I don't know really, this thing seems like a really defensive monster because uh, my choice banded U-turn right here, as you can see, it's not going to do much at all, and um, I'm going to switch out of there into Heatran, and um, obviously Heatran is the only thing on my team that can handle this thing properly, and um, right here, this was a very, very lucky play right here. I knew that he would either just switch out of there or go for the Protect. Um, and if he switched out of there, uh, I don't know really what he would switch out into, but if he sent in his um, Landurus, or Landurus, uh, then it will be an easy KO for me, and that is exactly what happens. That was not a prediction, that was a lucky play, alright? That was a lucky play. So, he's gonna send in his Swamper this turn, and I obviously don't want to stay in here because he, you know, both of his stabs, they're, real, they're super effective against me, so I'm gonna have to switch out of here into Amoongus and I take that Earthquake not so well at all, it does way too much but then again this thing doesn't have the best physical defensive stat and um, I'm more invested in physical or special defense so yeah it does, does quite a lot to me and then it finishes me off with the Ice Punch so I'm gonna send an Amber Palm this turn I think I gotta go for the U-turn pred predicting a switch out to his Jirachi and um, Right here, this was really lucky as well, I go for the U-turn, and I get a crit, and I was like, oh snap, and um, I, I don't know really how much of a big deal that was, but I could have just went for the Earth Power right here and killed him off, regardless if I got a crit or not, I'm not quite sure really, but, you know, I, I figured I might as well just try to go for the Fire Blast, because I know he's gonna die to the burn anyways, and I noticed that he actually had speeds me, which is strange, because, you know, he has quite a lot of... Uh, defensive uh, investment on his Jirachi and then he has speeds me as well and this thing is max speed as well but it's not like temp I, I think my I think my Heatran is modest nature but it's got max speed as well you know so get a set of Alamomala as he sends in his Swapper because I know I can easily wall it you know because um, his uh, waterfall is like literally nothing to my Alamomala <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna go for the Scald or Toxic this turn I'm not quite sure uh, well, actually, I think I'm gonna go for the Toxic on his Cresselia, which is perfect because um, then I'll get some more residual damage on his Cresselia, and um, I think I'm actually gonna switch out of here again into. And I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna switch into. God, I can't remember. I think I'm gonna switch out into Ambipum, I think, because I wanted to get off. Well, actually, never mind. I'm gonna send Heatran and uh, try to get off a Fire Blast on his Cresselia because I know that's gonna do pretty decent because I'm modest, you know, and. Um, I think what he's gonna do right here is, uh, I think he's gonna switch actually, if I'm not mistaken. Or he's gonna go for the Moonlight. Yeah, he's gonna switch out of here into his Swampert again. 
and um, I think I'm gonna go for the fire blast and miss. Yeah, I, I miss for the fire blast, and um, I obviously don't want to stay in there because. Uh, well, yeah, never mind. I'm gonna fodder out this thing because I really don't have that many options left, and. Um, I decided, you know what, Heatran has done his job, let's just sacrifice him, and um, then I think I'm gonna send him my Emma Palm just to try to go for, yeah, no, never mind, I'm gonna send him Ditto, look at this, I'm gonna send him Ditto, and I thought like, you know what, maybe he goes for the Earthquake and brings me down low enough so my Waterfall would, would do a lot more because, uh, obviously because of the Torrent range, but that's not gonna happen unfortunately, and uh, Waterfall, I was hoping it would 2 hit KO it from that range of health after the Toxic Damage, but it doesn't look like it, as he's got a little bit like 1 HP left right here, so that really sucks right there because um, you know, I could have easily gotten rid of his Priscilla right there. But, you know, it really depends on his own Swampert attack stats because obviously, you know, when I transform into his Swampert, um, I copy all of his stats, you know, so if he would have had a little bit more attack on his Swampert, then I could have potentially killed off his, um, his Priscilla right there. But, you know, he sees that he's gonna eventually die anyways because of the Toxics, so. I'm just gonna go, continue to go for the waterfall. I think that was my fifth, um, fifth uh, waterfall right there, and that means that my PP is gone, and um, I'm pretty much forced to switch out of there because you obviously um, only get five waterfalls when you transform into the opponent's Pokemon, you know. So now he's gonna go for the Moonlight. It's not gonna really matter though because I'm just gonna go for the U-turn. It's gonna do, um, it's gonna do a pretty decent chunk to his Cresselia, obviously because it's super effective. And uh, I think I'm gonna send an Alma Mall again. Uh, or I'm gonna send an. Yeah, I think I did. No, never mind. I'm gonna send in this thing. I, I don't know really why I sent it in, but. And you know, I'm just gonna stall out some more turns of Toxic, and this is his last Pokemon anyway, so. I figured, you know what, let's just get some more Toxic damage on this thing, and then send an Amber Palm just to try to finish it off, you know. And um, I'm gonna go for the Moonlight, because I wanted to get some more Toxic damage on him. And um, I think he's gonna go for the Toxic on me as well, because. Um, you know, now, now, you know, I, I have this thing and it's transformed to, into his own Pokemon and, uh, you know, he really can't do much at all to his own Pokemon, which is kind of funny, you know, but I'm gonna switch out of there into Elamamala and, um, this was a pretty good play right here. He's gonna go for the Moonlight and, um, right here I'm gonna go for the Healing Wish that I have on this Elamamala and it could work out in some situ situations where you just have to sacrifice something just to heal him up, you know, and, um, that's what I'm gonna do right here. He's gonna go for the psyche. It's gonna do a shitload of damage to me because uh, you know I don't have that much invested in uh, special defense. And wow, that did a lot to this thing. Wow, that was pretty crazy. So, gonna go for the healing wish. Gonna get rid of all my HP, and then I'm gonna send an ember palm, and then heal it all back up. So, what I was thinking right here, I was gonna go for the choice bandage a uh, fake out and I figured after the toxic damage he's gonna die and it will be my game and uh, that is exactly what's gonna happen right here and what one, one thing to note is that you know I heal up damage before I get the self rock damage so that could work out on some flying types that are about to die uh, to the toxic da or not the toxic but the stealth rock damage and uh, that could be very beneficial if you don't have any rap spitters but you know, regardless, I'm gonna go for the fake out and take out his uh, Cresselia after the toxic damage. So that was a good game. 5 0. Hope you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, leave a like rating. If you did not, leave, then leave a dislike. I'm okay with that. And subscribe if you enjoyed my video. See, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys later. Peace.